What's up, members of the Barrio? It's John coming to you from Harlem, and today we're continuing our Locals Guide to New York City, and we're gonna be exploring one of the most historic African-American neighborhoods in the entire city with someone who grew up here, and he's also a good friend of mine. This is my boy Evan, a native New Yorker, and what have you got in store for us today? You know, we're gonna go see a couple places that are my favorites growing up here. Uh, I grew up probably about maybe five, seven blocks away from here. So we're gonna just go ahead and take a look at like what I would consider the insider's guide. Guys, for our first stop, I feel like we've stepped into Washington, D.C. This is Grant's tomb. I've lived in New York for almost eight years and I've never been here before, which is really sad. It's the largest mausoleum in the United States, dedicated to Ulysses S. Grant, former Civil War general and U.S. president. And Evan, why did you think this was an important stop? It's something that a lot of New Yorkers don't take advantage of, so when you come out here, it's something you can do really easily without waiting around for a while. This tomb, I would say, is very stately. It's very elegant. You see different illustrations around the walls of the Civil War. I am so happy that I've actually finally come to this place. And you can even see the tombs right there of Grant and his wife. There's an old riddle that asks, who's buried at Grant's tomb? Tell me in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. And we're walking through where you grew up and you know, I know a lot of people that aren't from New York or just moved here kind of have this fear of going above let's say 100th Street thinking it's not safe there's not anything to do here you know how, how do you answer that I, I say that that's 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 completely untrue like there's always this stigma about coming up into Harlem where you're like oh my god like as soon as I get off the train like they're gonna target me and assault me but now because of how things are changing up here and this change isn't recent, it's been going on for years. This is definitely the place where you want to come. We just entered Main Strip Harlem, so it's going to be really cool. We're going to start seeing a lot more people than we did uh, over by Grant's Tomb and over on the, uh, on the furthest west that you can possibly get. So now that we're entering the heart, we're going to start seeing some, some cool stuff. With all this, like, this, again, used to be all these, like, local businesses. The only thing that's so local that's still here is Rainbow. I haven't been to Harlem too many times and something that really strikes me about this neighborhood already is just the amount of energy. Like I know there's energy all over New York, but it feels like something extra's in the air here. Do you agree? You know, when you're in Harlem, there's a certain pride that goes along with that because just like any other neighborhood in New York, you know, you're like, I'm from Brooklyn, I'm from Queens, and you have that, you know, real pride. But like with Harlem, nobody ever really says, hey, I'm from Manhattan. And people are like, yeah, that's, not a thing. So when you say I'm from Harlem, it gives you some authenticity and it's, it's, it's just like a sense of pride. Definitely something that I've noticed up in Harlem that I don't see so much in downtown Manhattan, unless you're maybe in Chinatown, is there's a lot of sidewalk vendors everywhere. There's a lot of good smells in the air too. I mean, we smell like you know, the incense before, really good food. Oh yeah. You know, what, you're, what you have there is you have a lot of people who are taking care of the culture. You know, a lot of hair care products, a lot of natural oils, uh, just for scents and things of that nature. We're about to walk inside the Apollo Theater, which was, uh, became the Apollo in 1935, and it's really well known for Showtime at the Apollo. It's a long-running TV show, and you know, we're just going to quickly show you the lobby. It looks absolutely awesome. All right, guys, we're really not supposed to film in the lobby, so a few things. It's okay. One, they do have historical tours. Look it up on their website. Two, anybody can do amateur night at the Apollo. Evan, yeah. you got something for them? Oh, yeah. I, 100%. I'm the funniest guy you'll ever meet. Trust me. He is really funny. I'll just do what I can. Since you mentioned it, I think we've counted like five churches we've passed in the last two blocks, right? Yeah. It, it's 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 a thing. Religion is, is huge in this community. So, you know, again, I have personal recommendations I can make to you depending on like what denomination you are. But honestly, like if you need to find that spiritual guidance, might as well come out to Harlem and enjoy some good food afterwards. <laughs> good point. Speaking of food, Team Adriana here is hungry. As always. As always. So, <laughs> Evan, uh, I think we're gonna go take care of this food thing right now. Oh, 100%. Taking one of the best places here in Harlem. 
we're in front of Amy Ruth's and Evan, there's a lot of heavyweights in Harlem for soul food. I mean, you've got Sylvia's obviously, uh, Red Rooster is one of the newer ones. Why did you want to do Amy Ruth's? So it's very simple. When you come to Amy Ruth's, you're just getting like that nice home cooking experience that is what soul food's all about here. Plus, I gotta say they got the best chicken and waffles here in the city. So again, if you guys want that nice comfort feeling, you know, you come here for the chicken and waffles, come here for the catfish, maybe the black eyed peas, the collard greens, you know how it goes. I'm really excited for these chicken and waffles. Let's check this out. So my first impressions of Amy Roots is I love the artwork on the wall. It's just highlighting a lot of famous African-Americans. And we are about to talk to the head chef. Evan has got some really good questions for her. I grew up here, I was literally like here, day one Amy Roots. You look familiar. We'll see. He's got I that face. That. Yeah. I appreciate that. Because one thing about the food here, we make it daily, okay. but also we say prayer. You have to do, if you're gonna do the way the ancestors did it, oh, yeah. then the ancestors commune to the God. So cooking was their love. When the people sat down to eat, they wanted them to really enjoy it. Really feel like they are back home. Really have a moment of peace and tranquility. Talk about the chicken and waffles. Why, why do you think it's your most famous dish? Well, one, because we season the chicken like 24 hours in advance. Let it sit in this special seasoning. Same thing with the you're waffle. You're not gonna give us a secret on that, are you? No. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that would be foolish. Okay. It's like three or four seasoning, but it would be foolish. Right here, you got your collard greens. You got your baked mac and cheese. You got your candy yams. And you got your black eyed peas. Here we go. All cheers. Right. Cheers. Collard green cheers. Mmm. There's so much flavor, that's just the first thing that came to my mind. Oh yeah, perfectly good. Like, you can even see like the bits of meat that are in here. Unfortunately, it's not vegan or vegetarian, but it's pretty darn good. This need love. Mm. It's such a perfect combination, Evan. Like, whoever would have thought combining a chicken waffle in one would be so good, but they, they try to complement each other really well. You know, that's why Jesus exists. Is sometimes you just gotta go ahead and, you know, put things together that work, you know? All right, members of Mario, this is for you. Ooh. Big bite. Like, you can even put that in the words. Like, it's just like, it's so melty in your mouth. Like, it's like eating a cloud. Like, there's no other way to describe this. Like, it is literally the best waffle I've had, and trust me, I eat a lot. <laughs> All right, Adriana, are we gonna be eating dinner tonight after this? This is lunch. I don't think so, guys. <laughs> Look at this table. It's phenomenal. Everything's so good so far. And this is why you come to Harlem. That was one of the best experiences I've had in a New York City restaurant in all my years living here. That was absolutely incredible. Adriana, one of your first soul food experiences. Uh, what did you think? It was amazing. I actually fulfilled the love of that meal because it was so delicious, so good, and the lady was so lovely. I love this place so much. Evan, what do you think? Where, where to next? I think it's time we head uptown. Evan, I, I want to thank you. Members of the Barrio, one of my favorite things about having this YouTube channel is the ability to explore New York. And I don't know everything we've covered on this video. I have not been to some of these places. So I want to thank you for being an awesome guide. And what do we got here? Why'd you take us here? So right now we got the Schomburg Center. Um, what's really cool about this is that whenever you want to talk, whenever you want to talk about, you know, the African American experience here in not only New York but also the U.S., like this is one of the major places where you're gonna come to find that type of information. What we're gonna show you now is arguably, I have heard, one of the most beautiful streets, beautiful areas of New York City. Let's do it. Let's do it. Guys, the sun is starting to set and this mural on the Harlem Hospital, absolutely gorgeous. Just some of the street art and the general artwork here is tremendous. All right guys, where we are right now, and I had mentioned this earlier in the video, is Abyssinian Baptist Church. It's literally the church to come to if you're in Harlem. 
uh, the Reverend Calvin Butts has been here forever. And like, honestly, like his sermons are legendary. So I know the black church has this really big reputation and this one fits the bill. So if you're in New York, if you're like, you know, praising, this is where you come. We found ourselves kind of trudging our, is that a word trudging? Trudging our way through an alley in Harlem and it, it feels kind of weird, I don't know. Like I'm not used to seeing alleys this wide and this big in Manhattan, let alone New York City. Yeah, so the big thing about uh, here in Manhattan is uh, land is just too valuable. So they don't actually have alleys. But here, we're walking behind Shriver's Row right now, which is one of the only places you're actually gonna find an alley in New York City. Just because again, the land is so expensive that you're not really gonna be able to do anything like this. So the reason why this alley exists is because when this development was first built, there were still horses, so people would actually come down this alley with their horse and use it for, you know, garbage and things like that. So this way, uh, here in their private community, um, there were places to store this stuff. We are at the famous Strivers Row. I think I've only been here once before, and it really reminds me a lot of Brooklyn, certain parts, like let's say Park Slope. Yeah, uh, I mean, the big thing about this is that when you start to look at the history of Shriver's Row, it's really interesting. Uh, you had a land developer that came into Harlem and started building all these nice, beautiful houses uh, right around the turn of the century. And what ended up happening is, even though the neighborhood was going considerably African-American, um, this guy didn't sell any houses to any of the black residents. So he ended up going through, it, it ended up being a huge commercial flop. Then what you ended up having after that is that the bank foreclosed and took all the property back. At which point they were able to resell the houses um, at a somewhat more modest price. But of course the only residents that were able to afford them were the black residents that were towards the upper crust of society. Therefore the term came that they were striving for the best. This became Strivers Row. Excellent history right there. I like it. We're dropping knowledge today. We're dropping it. So Evan and I were looking for this. I saw this online. It says private road Walk your horses. Evan, we did it man. We finally found the sign. Yes I would compare this to Rainbow Row in Charleston where like you come and you just have like a nice peaceful walk You know and just admire the beautiful homes that are here um, the only thing that I would probably recommend is not to do it in winter like we're doing right now because <laughs> you really don't get the true sense of the beauty with like the trees in full bloom or anything like that. <gasps> Guys, it is flurrying. What the hell just happened? Guys, we had the most random little <laughs> snow shower. I didn't see any snow in the forecast. The sun is setting. This is a, a very nice little moment here. Evan, did you set this up? I, 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 I did my best with my superpowers. Did you, did you set this up? I tried, I tried. We have a snow shower at <laughs> sunset on Strivers Row. Our movie moment's happening right now, I'm gonna cry. You know what, I, I, I think with the snowstorm, I can honestly say I do like that side better than the colorful side. Okay, that does look really nice. <laughs> so many different things that you can do in this neighborhood that are just unreal that I gotta encourage you guys just to not stop at 96th Street and think that's all that Manhattan has to offer. Come on up here and have a good time. Tell me down below in the comments what you think of Harlem, you know, which of these places you would most like to visit. Special thanks to Evan, who was an absolutely incredible tour guide. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to this channel for a lot more adventures, tips, and tricks from New York City and beyond. Guys, thank you so much for watching, as always. Until next time. Oh, guys, there we go, Yay, everybody. Nice job, we did it.